Hello everybody, this is From Milwaukee to Nashville featuring the Florida Everblades. Just doing a quick update for the Florida Everblades, do some talk about their news and some transactions and see yeah. what see what we can dig up here because they've kind of had a quiet week, so yeah. let's not give them any uh, slack here. Uh, but however, uh, for Florida Everblades fans, uh, just a heads up in Milwaukee if you haven't heard. Um, Five people at um, Molson Coors. Yes. Um, That's well, uh, tragic. Miller, Miller Brewing Company for us in Milwaukee, but the family or the the, the beverage family. Yep. Um, uh, lost uh, five of their employees to a heinous uh, act of murder. Uh, the owner or the uh, the uh, gunman um, committed suicide. Uh, one was injured and I believe died later. They tried to save the person's life. I don't know. Not all the details were given to us, but we know that right now all we know is that five people perished at Miller. Miller's one of their main distilleries at the loading dock. And, it was, and right now we're standing strong for Milwaukee. So Milwaukee strong. If you see that in our videos, that is why it covers up our Milwaukee logo. I think we'll even try and keep that up because uh, the state's even honoring, like, putting the flag at half mast, uh, the, with the state and the U.S. flag at half mast until the last funeral. Yeah. The last victim. I think that would be the nicest thing to do in the same way. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing the same thing, so. Uh, gotta keep an eye on the flag, I guess. Yeah. Alright, so our show is brought to, you, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker 2002. Mm -hmm. West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee's number one stop shop for all your hockey needs. Yeah. Um, basically, from helmets to skates and from jerseys to mm -hmm. to shirts and hats to uh, referee jerseys. If you want to dress up like uh, Blues Brothers with the blind referee thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, like we said... That was our whole thing. Like I said, let's get into some of the Cyberblade news. So off the jump one, um, Ken Appleby was a, uh, assigned back to Florida. So that's, yeah. that's a big boost for them. I know there was a lot of panic about it earlier that uh, like they were worried that they weren't going to get him back in time, but I was like kind of pumping the brakes in the, the fan groups. I'm just like, he'll be back. He's only there if we need him. Like, I think it's, I honestly said it was only going to be for a one game, like, barely even a week. Yeah. Like, just to, you know, so Connor Ingram could go up in uh, place for uh, uh, the open slot because of Pekka, Pekka Rene's uh, uh, illness. And, like, like clockwork, he's back down to, Mul was it Ingram's back down to Milwaukee and Ken Appleby is back down to Florida. So, again, like, no reason. Just, just perfectly timed. Yep. Just calm down, Florida. It's Okay. Just imagine if this was during one we, of your busy weeks. We certainly don't want to ruin your success because, as we don't want our success ruined. But then again, understanding the process, it's it sucks. I know, but that's the the breaks of being a development team. Yep. Um. So they also picked up, acquired, um, Reed Jackman from the Atlanta Gladiators for future considerations. Boston's organization. Yes. Yes. Um, they, his rookie season has tabbed five points, one goal, four assists in 22 games. Has split the season between the Atlanta Gladiators and the Newfoundland Growlers. So they, he knows the Growler system. Yeah. And oddly enough, uh, who's, who are they playing in a couple days, Dan? The Growlers. They're playing the Growlers. Um, so he has notched 10 points in, in 34 games over his two seasons. Uh, he went to York in the Youth Sports League, which is Canada's ho uh, college hockey. Oh. Interesting. He also played for the Fort Wayne Comets. In the yes. Too. I don't know if that was before the Vegas affiliation or not, but... That was probably during the time where they were angry and had to sign someone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, full disclosure, that's when, uh, what was it, last year in the... Uh, AHL playoff run or call the cup run. Uh, Wolves were signing uh, uh, Fort Wayne signed players to uh, Chicago just to make the, the the run. But that's that's all in our Chicago Wolves videos. 
Uh, those are editorials, and they're not sponsored for a reason. <laughs> Go! Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, there was breaking news uh, in Florida uh, on the 26th as uh, the Everblades organization was looking to sign uh, back emergency backup goalie uh, David Aries as their emergency Zamboni driver. <laughs> All right, would we like to read it to why? Well, uh, like we, as we know, David Aries was the is the now famous like this is taking the world by storm. The famous uh, emergency backup goaltender at the age of forty two uh, guided the Hurricanes to a six three win over the own or his own organization that pays him, which even funnier. And now, like he's the basically the spark plug that has gotten the league to, to consider an emergency goaltending position in all teams now. Yeah, all teams must have one and carry them with them. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the Everblades president and general manager said, and quote, this is the time of year, this time of the year is especially tough on ECHL teams with NHL and AHL trade deadlines. And the last thing we need to worry about is having to find a Zamboni driver on the day of a game while we're trying to sign players on short notice. So, <laughs> I, I, I have to give I have to give them credit that they're having fun with this. Uh, Craig Brush. Yeah, Craig Brush is the is a uh, president and GM of the of the Everblades to our ads and Preds fans. Uh, but yeah, uh, in like after the tr- after the trade le- or in in response to the NHL trade deadline, uh, Florida uh, pretty much reassigned four players or loaned to other AHL clubs: uh, Cam McLeese, uh, John McCarron. Um, what's the last one? Uh, Blake Wonecki. Um, fourth. I can't remember the fourth, but. but uh, okay, we got McKay, McLeese, Wonecki, uh, Magwood, and Craig's all up here. Yeah. All up in the AHL now. Yep. All yeah. right. So, um, head coach of the Everblades, Brad Rolf, said, We can't make any promises to David that this position will translate into any game type like it did for him in Toronto. Everblades coach, at, however, added, however, with the Maple Leafs ECHL affiliate, the Newfoundland Crawlers, in town on Friday, we aren't opposed to him taking down another Leafs organization for a second time this week <laughs> if the opportunity presents itself. <laughs> oh, man. Again, like... I'm, All right, so after both Carolina's goaltenders left the game against Toronto on Saturday, the 42-year-old goalie Aries came into the game in the second period as a designated emergency goal, backup goalie. He emerged with the win after stopping eight of ten shots he faced. The first two went in. Um, at this point, signing a David is a precautionary measure, Brush said, and you, but you never know with who... Might receive a call up at this time of year. We want to be proactive about something that and having someone to resurface the ice if we lose a guy we currently have under contract. The details of Aries' offer. Here go, just go. Yeah. So, oh, the details of Aries, the offer to Aries were not disclosed by, <coughs> excuse me, by the Everblades executive staff at the time of his release. Though an unnamed alligator who resembles the Everblades' mascot didn't confirm that at least several rounds of golf on various high-end Southwest Florida courses were included. Oh, I love an organization that likes to have fun. All right, so they start a three-day uh, with uh, Friday's matchup uh, against Newfoundland. They play three and three against them. Yeah. Oi. But, uh, yeah, they get to play back home in Hertz Arena where you can make your favorite joke with the Everblades. Except for Sunday, I won't be able to help you. Oh, that's right. I'm going to have to do it. Or I'm not just going to do it anyway. <laughs> um, however, you're doing Friday. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to make the joke. <laughs> uh, well, that hurts my feelings. It hurts, <laughs> don't it? <laughs> 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 but, as you can see, we're all in good spirits here. Yeah. Everything seems to be looking right. Uh, we don't know the uh, significance of uh, the Admiral's injury and why Craig's and uh, Magwar were yeah. recalled, but we can tell you that we did not see Daniel Carr on the ice. So he's either just 
back in conditioning or banged up concussion yeah again it's one of those things where we just like i hate to say it this way you just gotta roll with the punches yeah but um yeah we're also we're on our way to do uh, an editorial next yeah, we have an editorial about fighting in hockey. Yep, we uh, recently came up because uh, in the AHL, the uh, Charlotte Checkers and the uh, Hershey Bears got into a little bit of a scrap in which one of their players, or both or both players are, were without helmets at the point until one, was it one of the, the Charlotte Checkers player uh, dealt a blow which led to a Hershey's Bear player uh, getting knocked out cold and hitting his head on the ice, cracking his head open, which never a good thing. But it happens. But it happens. And the way well, that Well, let's happens, put it this way. You walk around in Milwaukee long enough, if you come up here from Florida... You're going to split your head open. <laughs> yeah, you're going to slip on some ice and split your head open, and it just happens. Yeah, if it's not, like, in the crosswalks itself. But, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Running when you only have, like, five seconds left to get across the street. Yeah, with, like, the eight-second the eight second, uh, crosswalk alert. Yeah. Uh, but, no, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how we feel about fighting, how, like, you've, you've had your experience in hockey fights. <laughs> Don't start me with that. I mean, perfect editorial fodder. But yeah, we're gonna talk how we feel about it, or pros, cons, all of it. Oh, by the way, go over to the Admirals page if you do like fighting in hockey, and check out that Troy Grostick fight. Yeah, like seriously, huh? it's one of the few things that's kind of lit up that page in a little bit. Like, yeah, every time we win, it does, but not as much. Like, I was waiting to see if it crossed the. The, the infamous uh, bench brawl between the Ice Hogs several years ago. We'll see, because that thing's at like two million. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Wish well, we could get that many views. Start it up, folks. We're waiting for the next referee fight. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun to watch. Yes, it would. It's just like not, just arguing over a call, and then all of a sudden the, ha the whistles go down. <laughs> oh, boy. We have fun here, but... All right, so this is from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by our wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. Also, don't forget to check out our friends over there at Wausau. Yeah. Wisconsin Adaptive Sports Association. Yeah, Wausau is a good friend of ours. Um, we meet a lot of their uh, athletes. Members, members, athletes, yep, at uh, Admirals Games. Uh, Admirals themselves actually sponsored their sled hockey group. So... Uh, they do a variety of sports, especially in wheelchair sports, like they do bowling, tennis, basketball, that's uh, through uh, Bucks and uh, the Marquette Golden Eagles. They do a lacro uh, wheelchair Marquette lacrosse. Marquette lacrosse, actually. Yeah, Marquette more... lacrosse, yes. Uh, Marquette lacrosse does a, a wheelchair lacrosse. They do uh, quad rugby. They do uh, goal ball and just a variety of sports over there. And uh, donations from uh, people like us and people like you are what keep their lights on and keep those sports funded for uh, children, adults, and veterans alike. Uh, if you're interested in either checking out of this organization or to throw a donation their way, uh, visit WASA.org. Uh, and then click their donate button. Um, yep. They have a good thing where you can buy a t-shirt. Um, I believe it does have... Oscar Mike. Yeah, Oscar Mike. Oscar Mike is a veteran funded so most of the money, all but $5 of it will go to Oscar Mike, yep. and the rest will go to Wausau. So it goes to, you're doing two good charities at one. Right. So that's that's your best buy right there. You get a shirt, something you can wear to represent them. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we, we might work something out in the future where we could do something like that uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, we, we have been thinking of merch, so we got to come up with a design and everything, get some money flowing together, but... And uh, if you're also looking for alternate ways to donate to them, there's their Amazon Smile program where you can select them as a nonprofit uh, distribution, uh, which any purchase that you do on Amazon.com, uh, a portion of the, the proceeds of your purchase go directly to WASA itself. Uh, all that information is also at WASA.org. Correct. But, so, uh, they do not sponsor us in any way, that should be made clear. Neither we, do the Admirals. Predators no. or Florida Everglades. Or the, the Bucks or the Marquette. We just like to mention them because they're a part of our community. So uh, they're a part of our community and they keep this organization above. Can't but, um, fight. <laughs> I don't have the cameras pointed on them. <laughs> but uh, no, they're, they're a great part of our community. They're part of the greater Milwaukee community. 
And uh, just as we're Milwaukee strong for them, we're absolutely strong for uh, for Wasa as well. Yeah, so that is one of our big picks. And our main sponsor over there is Hockey Locker, 2002 yes. West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Also, for those of you arena fanatics, go check out our YouTube page. Uh, yes. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. But we do have an arena video we just finished. It took a whopping two hours. <laughs> we have a lot to say about these arenas. Bowling alley, bowling alley, bowling alley. Can of Pringles. Pringle Arena. Pringle uh, Arena. And uh, in reference, we're talking about the Scotia Scotia Banks Owl Dome. Yep. Long so, story. But uh, we give our favorites. We give our dis. We give our uh, hated arenas. We give our pros. We give our cons. And uh, we get a general look at the, the current 31 because we've got a couple new ones on the way. Yeah, I can't wait to see Keybank when it's done. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Uh, we got that and we got the Seattle Arena coming up uh, in 2021. Keybank is, uh, not Keybank, uh, uh, what is that? Uh... Which one were you thinking of? It, it was Keybank. That was actually the name of the Seattle uh, uh, Arena. Yeah. Yeah. So we would have two. <laughs> so you got that one, and then we have the new uh, Calgary arena that's on the way. Yes. So got some new ones on the way. So we will be doing an added, like, add-on to them when new arenas are built. We'll just yeah. take a look at them, whether it be renderings or photos, but we will be taking a look at them. And, hey, we're going to be doing one on uh, AHL arenas inside and out. We'll find a way to see if we can... Uh, condense it a little bit, maybe like half the arena is one and the other. Um, actually, what we were talking about, let us know what your thoughts are because yeah. we're talking about doing it interior and then exterior or exterior and then interior. Just let us know what your thoughts are, what you want us to do. Let us know what you want to see because if you tell us, then we do it. Yeah. Um, so uh, we are from Milwaukee to Nashville. We were featuring the Florida Everblades and a uh, little chatter about them so they don't feel so forgotten um you know they didn't play at all this week they play a three and three this weekend so yeah well, let's busy, see busy how we can and uh um he will be doing uh sunday's video because i will be on the road yep i will be doing it from uh my scenic uh my scenic student apartment <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah um i will be uh traveling where am i going are you going to bridgestone yeah i'm going to bridgestone you getting the call up Oh, where are we, where are we going in March? Uh, we're gonna try and get a wild game in in a scenic St. Paul, Minnesota, and freeze to death. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're all used to this. Like, if we brought our Florida friends up, I I don't know, we we would have to take care of them. Yeah, we we, we have to give them uh, our our uh, windbreakers. Well, I mean, <laughs> we're the crazy ones that go down to Florida and wear shorts in like fifty or sixty degree weather. We do that here. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> that's, our, that's our thick scotty skin. <laughs> Trust me, I moved to Duluth, Minnesota, which is right on the border. Well, almost the border of Canada. Yeah, it's almost roughly. like literally right on there on Lake Superior. Lake Superior is like frozen half the year. I mean, you could literally like walk over Lake Superior, and that would be the way, easiest way into Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poutine, poutine stand, please. Yeah, <laughs> Tim Hortons, please. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, that's one thing we have to hit in Minnesota. They do have a yes. couple. Yes. Yes, they do. Um, so uh, not sponsored. No, but <laughs> good food. Good food. We are we are food junkies. That's why we got these. Uh, <laughs> yes, the Buddha rubs. <laughs> that's what killed us last time when a uh, hammy of the Rockford Ice Hogs got us. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, let's we'll, close off. Uh, yeah, this like I said, from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel. This is Matt. And we'll see you guys later.